Hey, this is Matt. Just coming here today just to speak to you a little bit about the, um, the concept of using your feelings to, um, to know what is true and to accept truth. Um, a lot of people do this. A lot of people uh, try to allow them their own personal feelings, the way they feel about something, to guide them and let them know whether or not that something is true. And um, while we do have instincts and we do have things that God has given us to be able to um, d discern certain facts and certain truths, I suppose, to some extent. Uh, for instance, you know, if you walk, if you're walking down the street and you see a, a little alley there that looks there's something about it, you feel it's not quite right, and, you, and your instincts tell you not to go down that way, and you felt it, you shouldn't do that, and then you go and you find out later that there was a robber or something. You know, there are some instincts that we have. Uh, that we can camp, somewhat rely on as far as feelings are concerned uh, to guide us into truth or guide us, you know, to safety or whatever it might be. However, when it comes to spiritual things, uh, this is actually not the way we are supposed to determine whether or not something is true. Um, there are a lot of people, a lot of uh, there's a lot of religious movements out there that, in one way or another, in some way or another, they say we are supposed to determine the truth based on how we feel. Uh, some say we're just supposed to just listen to something, and if it feels good, we, we we go with it, and if it doesn't feel good, we don't go with it. Others say, you know, maybe pray about it and see if God tells you if it's true by a good feeling. However it may manifest itself, the simple fact of the matter is this is not what God tells us to do. Uh, the Holy Spirit um, convicts us of our sins. He convicts, of us, convicts us of the righteousness of God, the righteousness of Christ. He convicts us of the truth of Christ and <clears throat> brings us, uh, draws us to God. The word uh, draw comes from a Greek word, which means to drag or to coerce. Um, he's pulling on us. He's drawing on us. So, yes, there will be some feelings associated with that. However, the feelings are not how we determine what is true and what is not true. Uh, prime example, a lot of people I know, a lot of Christians I know, um, something happens, they sin too much or they they have a tragedy happen, or they they start maybe they, they start having a little doubt about something, you know, doubt, doubting the Bible or doubting their own salvation or whatever. And they feel as though they've gone too far. They feel as though they've sinned too much. They feel as though God doesn't really love them anymore. They feel these things, and they feel them, and they feel them, and they feel them, until the point where sometimes they eventually walk away from Christ. I, I've I've known a few people that have done that. And I've met some people that have done that. Um, and even if they don't, even if they don't walk away from Christ, the simple fact of the matter is they're miserable all the time because they feel something and they're not relying on what we're supposed to rely on, which is the Word of God. Now, the Word of God, the Bible, uh, 66 books of the Bible, um, in in English is not a perfect. It's not perfect. We do sometimes need to go back to the Greek, but God, God uses his Holy Spirit to show us what is true, and, he, and the medium that we, we use, so to, so to speak, is the Bible. Uh, the Bible tells us that it's the Word of God. Uh, it tells us that it's written so that we can know the difference between truth and error, and so that we can know how what God wants from us, what God wants for us, what God wants us to do and say and to think and believe. And this is why the Scripture was written. The Scripture was not written to simply tell a tale that makes you feel good, and then you say, well, I can, I feel this is right, and I feel this isn't right, and I feel this is right, and this isn't right. It's not about feelings. Your feelings are more or less irrelevant when it comes to the truth. If you're feeling doubt about Jesus, or about your relationship with Jesus, about anything in, that God says to you, and you feel that maybe you're not savable, you feel that maybe you're not... Um, you know, God doesn't love you, you feel these things, what do you do? Well, you go to the truth. You go back to the Word of God. You see what God says about it. I personally have struggled with a lot of doubts and fears in my since I've been a Christian, even before I was a Christian, to some extent. I um, suffered from some, some doubt and fear. Um, and whenever I suffered from that doubt and fear, the only thing that resolved it, the only thing that brought it, in the focus and gave me the truth and gave me the facts and gave me the answer 
that I needed was to believe what the Word of God says and not let my feelings guide me. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, um, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on or rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. And, you know, people, I've read that, and I've had that on my voicemail, and I've, and I've read it to people, and I've read it myself. And sometimes I need to stop and just realize what it's actually saying. I need to contemplate it because a lot of times I forget, and I know a lot of us do. And people that are a member of members of these, you know, untrue religions and different things that believe that we're supposed to determine what is true based on what we feel. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't tell us to to to, to determine what we what we uh, believe based on what we feel. If we did that, everybody's religion would be the, would be the truth. Everybody's religion, religion, religion in general would be subjective rather than objective. Uh, if, if if my religion is true and I because I feel it, your religion is true because you feel it. The Muslim's religion is true because he feels it. The Catholic's religion is true because he feels it. The Buddhist religion is true because he feels it. We all feel that our religions are true. It doesn't matter what they say because we just feel that they're true, right? We know it in our heart. We know it's true because we feel it. And so, therefore, it must be true, and everybody else must be wrong. Not how it works, though. Uh, God gave us the Bible. The Bible's full, chock full of facts. It's got facts and figures. It's got uh, historical data. It, it can be, it can be um, um, attested to by history, attested to by archaeology. Uh, it's got, it's got many logical and reasonable um, uh, proofs and, and uh, so forth in it. It's not simply a story that somebody sat down and wrote to make people feel good or to make people follow their them in, in a religious belief. The Bible is actually the Word of God, not just because it is something that God commissioned to be to be uh, read and to give to to be used by by Him for to bring people to Himself. It's not just because, true because of that, but it's also factual. The Bible is actually factual. It has historical facts in it. Which can be which which can be um, uh, you know proven or shown evidential shown as evidential. It's not just a story. It's not some kind of you know fairy tale like a lot of the, the atheists and people like that will say. So we are we are not supposed to determine what is true based on what we feel. Our feelings can can lie to us. Our feelings can can lead us in the wrong direction. Uh, the the Bible says one in one place that the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? And that question, who can know it, is a rhetorical question. In other words, nobody can know what the heart really is, is saying. Basically, what the heart tells you is what you already wanted to believe anyway. That's really what it boils down to. You're, when, you're, when you consult your heart, you're only consulting that part of you that wants to believe something anyway. So if you, if you really want to believe that some religion is true, or some faith or whatever it might be, some prophet, some preacher, some teacher, whatever it might be, if you really want to believe that's true, and then, then your heart tells you that it's true, then you go, oh, well, see, my heart told me it was true. Therefore, it must be true. But that's not how it works. It doesn't work that way. Um, the Word of God is not, some, it's, it's not subjective. It's, it's objective. It is not something that was written just for a, a certain group of people. Uh, God's Word, the Bible, is written for every human being on this planet. God wants every person to be saved. He wants every person to come to the knowledge of the truth. And it's not something that he wrote down just to just to hear himself talk or just to add to the many, many religious books of the world. The Bible is not like any other so quote unquote religious book in the world. It's not given to us that we simply accept it blindly with quote unquote faith. The word faith comes from a word in Greek which means to trust implicitly. It's a, it's not just a belief. Uh, one of the in my opinion, one of the worst uh, things that Bible translators has ever have ever done is to write that word down as belief because the word belief in, in the minds of many people just means something that we believe because it sounds good. You know, I believed in Santa Claus. I believed in Easter money. I believe that all men are basically good. I believe it's kind of a, it's not a real belief because there's there's no c commitment to it. The faith of the Bible, the faith that we have in, in the Bible that we see in the Bible is a, is a faith of committing to something. It's a faith of it's a faith that causes causes and calls for action. Uh, the Bible tells us in Ephesians uh, chapter two verses eight and nine that we are we are saved by grace through faith, 
It is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And that word works uh, is the word is a word in Greek that means uh, action. So the Bible does. The Bible tells us plainly: we're not saved by anything we do. We are not saved by our actions. Our actions do not save us. However, true faith is not just a belief in something like I believe in Santa Claus or whatever. It is a true committal faith. It commits to something, and it 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 necessitates action. In other words, let's say for instance, we'll just use a um, a um, uh, kind of a childish uh, analogy i suppose you could say it's kind of a easy easy uh, kind of basic analogy let's say for instance i'm walking along the, the street and i have a rock in my hand and i see a person on the street and i say in three seconds i'm going to throw this rock and i'm going to throw it at you and, you, and if you don't duck you're going to get hit so what do you think that person's going to do are they going to stand there and let me hit them or are they going to duck well if they truly believe they truly have faith they truly trust that what i'm saying is true that i'm am, that i really am going to throw this rock at them and if they don't duck they're going to get hit then that's 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 what they'll do they'll get out of the way because they had faith they trusted that i was telling the truth and in a very in a, in a similar but much more complex way the faith that we have in, in god in christ is like that it's not simply a, a blind faith it's not simply a faith that we just say well it's, it sounds good so i'll just believe it and you know maybe something else will come along it'll sound better and i'll believe that that's not what faith is faith is committing to something in trust and that's what it means it's not a feeling although you do have feelings when you have faith although you you know having the holy spirit in your life does produce feelings it produces joy and peace and different things these things are not what we how we determine the truth but they are byproducts of the truth so if your feelings are byproducts of the truth then that's great if your feelings are what you use to determine the truth if you're using your heart if you're using your 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 intellect and you're going by what feels the, the best uh, you're most likely going to go right into the into the arms of of judgment you know into the, into the pits of hell in the arms of judgment the bible says that um, the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness, all unrighteousness, sorry, ungodliness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Let me say that one more time. I messed it up the first time. It says, the, the wrath of God is, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. And so when people go by what they feel, Rather than what the Word of God says, they are actually suppressing the truth. They're not. They're not accepting the truth. They are suppressing it. They're pushing it down. They're pushing it away, in favor of what feels good. And this is the way the world works. This is the way everybody in the world works. It's not just religious people. It's everybody. Whatever feels good, we do it. I mean, that's an old. Um, uh, I guess it's an old hippie expression. If it feels good, do it. Uh, and you see more often than not when people do what feels good. The, the consequences are negative. They don't, they don't. It doesn't work out because what feels good to us is always, almost always selfish. It's almost always about us. It's almost always not about true worship of God or true trust in God, but just what we can, what gets us by, what makes us feel good, what makes us relax, what makes us feel like we have some sort of connection to the divine and all this kind of stuff. But it's not the truth. Do not go with what you believe or what you feel. Go with the Word of God. Go with the revealed Word of God, and you will never fail if you do that. Trust in the Lord all with, with all your heart. Do not rely on, do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. So I just wanted to come by and kind of share that with you today. Thank you.